in my book, I really try to uh, distinguish between science, philosophy, and religion. In other words, I recognize these as sort of the three legs of the stool, and each are necessary. Um, and they need to be afforded a degree of separation from each other. If we think it's all, if there's no difference between science, philosophy, and religion, then I think that uh, we're, we're, we're not going to be able to optimize these, uh, these approaches to truth. In other words, um, uh, while science and spirituality and philosophy do well to inform each other and interact, uh, that is, they're not all the same thing. And, and philosophy can really help to both bridge and separate uh, religion or spirituality and science by um, being able to tell the difference between the two and by mediating between um, the natural uh, tension or conflict that, that arises when you have um, different approaches to, uh, to truth and goodness and beauty. So um, I, I think integral spirituality here at the beginning um, is, is, is most potent as a form of spiritual philosophy. And as a philosophy, it can really clarify uh, what's going on in the culture, what's going on in spirituality, by showing us how it's all part of this evolutionary continuum and how uh, what's really going on is, is, is consciousness is evolving by these values-based worldview stages uh, and that um, verticality isn't necessarily bad. So uh, uh, being able to transcend value relativism, being able to transcend... Um, anthropocentrism without uh, uh, leveling all values that says, well, humans are no more valuable than anything else. Humans, in my humble opinion, are m more significant. They recognize the beautiful, the true, and the good, and the good in, in ways that, um, that, that, at least at a higher level than animals, recognize beauty, truth, and goodness, I think, uh, especially the higher ones, uh, if you allow me to say higher. Um, but humans are an <laughs> <the> <laughs> humans, are, <laughs> humans are an emergence uh, uh, of these of the recognition of these values, and it's not just that once humans emerge, then they have a, a, a universe of beauty, truth, and goodness that they can see that that um, prior forms of life couldn't see. But this emergence continues through these stages, where each new stage of, of culture, whether it's uh, pre-traditional, traditional, modern, postmodern, each new stage represents a kind of a, a whole new octave of values, a whole new set of what's beautiful, true, and good, and um, that, that these, these conceptions, as they emerge, are getting wider and deeper, and uh, it doesn't mean it's, it's absolutely better. There are elements of uh, pre-traditional spirituality and values which are enduring and which we can't, um, uh, we can't achieve transcendence unless we include those, right? So an important part of uh, progressive spirituality has been a re-inclusion of earth-based forms of spirituality, of shamanism and, and of pre-traditional spirituality. And again, that, you know, letting the, all forms of spirituality in was a positive step. And so as we prune and carefully now use philosophy to kind of sort things out, that doesn't mean we're going to sort out the pre-traditional. Indeed, there are elements of that which are enduring and which are, you know, fundamental to all forms of spirituality. So it's it's the being able to recognize the subtlety that each stage has um, enduring elements that we we must include, as well as pathological elements which we do well to prune away. And so we begin to recognize that the degree of our transcendence is measured by the scope of our inclusion, but that our inclusion. It has to be discriminating. You know, we have to be able to, to tell the difference between the pathologies, uh, you know, the dignities and the disasters, as, as um, Wilbur elegantly says. And that's one of the roles of, of, uh, of the spiritual integral philosophy of evolution. It helps us begin to tell the difference 